Hi everyone, for the benefit of those who weren't with us live, this is the recording of part of our global networking event um, on Thursday the 15th of February, 10 a.m. Los Angeles, 1 p.m. New York, 6 p.m. London, 7 p.m. elsewhere in Europe, um, and everywhere in between. So it was good morning, good afternoon, and good evening uh, earlier <laughs> on. But this is the fun bit for us, where we have a bit of a breather from the furious and frantic nature of our random speed networking. So um, I'm delighted that Farah's agreed to do our talk today. 10 minutes, that's it. Um, and we're going to do five things you didn't know about colour, because Farah is a founder member of the Arts and Culture Network as a full member, um, and uh, is doing some amazing work, both as an artist as an, and an educator, with some very surprising things about colour. So. Farah, it's all it's all yours. You just tell me when you want to advance that image. Okie dokie. And you know what? Put your clock away. So if it's a bit over, it doesn't matter. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So hello, everybody. And thank you very much, Mark, for having me um, share five, in, five uh, things about colour that hopefully you didn't know. But anyway, if you did just... Anyway, so... Um, one of the first, so five things, I'm just going to go through them and then we're going to have an end session where I'm going to give you a contrast between a red and effects of a red painting and a green painting. So first I'm going to talk about the ancient practice of chromotherapy, which is absolutely fascinating that e ancient Egyptians knew the power of color energy vibration and they used it for healing. They used it in interiors where they would have floors in temples painted green and ceilings painted blue. And they would have rooms where you would have tainted um, glass or for blues to calm people down, for reds to give people energy. And they knew what they were um, doing thousands of years ago. As well as that, things like pranic healing, which um, uh, was sourced from China and India, um, is healing with color energies. So these are thousands of years ago, they knew how to utilize um, color energies. Um, can I have the next slide, please, Mark? Yeah, so this is an image of using the power of blue in the ancient Egyptian civilization. It's just incredible. Um, so that's the first thing I'll share in terms of chromotherapy, how the ancient Egyptians knew all about it, and then it was lost centuries later. So the next thing I'd like to share is how in the 1920s, third, third um, slide, please, Mark, so in the 1920s, Albert Einstein and Richard Tolman, who is a professional at California um, Tech, um, discovered the incredible powers of yellow, the color yellow. They were, um, they were um, registering the frequency, energy frequencies of, electro, of radioactive materials. And they suddenly realized that yellow blocks that um, uh, measurement of the radiation. Um, of the vibrations because what um, just randomly uh, somebody had walked past and they were wearing a bright yellow shirt. The measurements just stopped. They couldn't um, uh, they couldn't uh, measure any of the um, vibrations. So then they realized it was the color yellow because they tried it with different colors. And it was just incredible that they had discovered that yellow has such a strong um, power that it actually stops the, um, uh, the vibrations um, being read from all these incredible machines, et cetera. So um, there's all kinds of different things that happened as a result of that, um, which I'm not gonna go into because we've only got 10 minutes, but yellow is a very, very powerful color. And if Einstein is saying it, you know it's very, very true as well. Okay, so as I said, I'm keeping it very brief. Right, third um, uh, topic, we don't have a uh, slide on this. So Mark, if you can just remove the slide, please. So um, I'm going to tell you about the color pink. Pink has such powerful properties. It, if you experience a, a very pale pink, it will instantly give you a sense of calm. But if you have a bright pink, it can cause, um, it can cause aggravation. It can um, actually raise your heartbeat. What's really funny is um, I can't mention the name of the teams, but two teams in the States, and I can't mention the sports in case somebody um, looks this up. They, they um, <laughs> purposely painted the visiting team's changing room bright pink to make them lose their focus, to, dis um, to distract them, and to also maybe uh, kind of cause aggravation on a higher level. 
And these teams who did that to the visiting teams kept winning, kept winning. So pink can be interesting, but just be aware too much pink in a room can, if it's too bright, can cause um, a bit too much um, uh, high level of energy. So yeah, just keep it calm in a room. Pale pink, yes, absolutely. Bright pink, mm -mm. so yeah, so there's that. Um, the fourth thing I would mention, um, I talk about is color energy auras. We all have a unique composition of color energy. We around us have a bioplasmic field um, and it's all about vibrations and those vibrations um, are represented in colors. So um, I, I learned about this in pranic healing as well because I'm a certified practitioner of advanced pranic healing. So we all have unique color energy auras and they represent um, various personality traits. Um, recently, I um, uh, read the color energy auras of Simon Alexander Ong, who's an incredible um, life coach, a motivational speaker, and his um, energies were, I, I could, I read them before anyway, but when I did the actual reading, it verified that he had um, very um, prominent green and blue, and then a secondary aura of violet. So it's very, very interesting how we all have different compositions. Um, they do change slightly, but um, generally it's normally the same composition. And so um, basically it's each color has its different um, uh, powers, which then I'm very, very grateful to um, uh, sometimes go forward and actually create a painting based on those auras, which then becomes a very personal piece in um, one's home because it's a very personal self-portrait, which then keeps giving that person energy um, anytime they feel down or they just wanna feel empowered or relaxed. It's, a, it's a, just a wonderful experience to be able to share with people, but it is fascinating that we all have a unique composition of color energy auras. And once you know what it is, you can really, really utilize it in all areas of your life, well-being, emotionally, physically, and mentally as well. Um, so yeah, I, I love sharing that with people. So the um, uh, fourth thing is actually the fifth thing I'm gonna share. And Mark, can we have the next slide please? Is, and I love talking about this, the fact that we can all feel color energy without the use of sight. So I discovered all of this when I became a certified practitioner of advanced pranic healing. And when I realized that we can feel distinctly vibrations from warm colors like orange, red, yellow, in comparison to cool vibrations from colors like blue, green, um, white, it was, it just blew me away. So then I did a lot of research in the physics, the science behind it. And that's why I mentioned Einstein discovering the power of yellow um, earlier, but it's just, Something that, we, it, something that we can all do, but very few people know that we can do it. So what it is, it's the simple explanation is that all colors absorb levels, different levels of light. And therefore the vibrations they emit are, um, are different in terms of if it's a very warm color, it will absorb a lot more light. Therefore their vibrations will be of a higher frequency. Same with yellow and orange. And then the opposite with blues, pale greens, white you can physically feel the difference. Um, next slide, please, Mark. You can physically feel the difference between the two um, warm and cool colors. This is my friend Tab, the London, Tabish Khan, the London art critic, and he got it straight away. Um, and it's just really nice when you share it with somebody who's never done the exercise before, but then when they get it, they're like, oh, didn't realize. Um, it's just really wonderful sharing this with the blind community um, when I've delivered my workshops, because if you can imagine how somebody who didn't know that they could feel color energies suddenly realize that they can, it's a real blessing to be able to do that. And it's also sometimes it evokes emotion in people because it's a very, very um, deep experience when it means that they can actually utilize it in their lives day to day. Um, next slide, please, Mark. So it's a case of you don't have to have it on a painting or whatever. You can experience this using everyday objects like apples. So this is an image of a workshop that I did recently in Gibraltar. And um, uh, these students, they um, didn't know anything about color energy vibrations and they all got it straight away, which was wonderful. So basically it's very, very, I'm just looking at the time. I'm very, very 
easy um, exercise, which um, I can share with you later if we have time. But I'm really um, uh, aware of the fact we've got, um, you know, just a few. Mark, how long have we got left? Okay. Anyway, um, so yeah, basically, it's a case of you, if you just close your eyes and focus on your hands and leave a centimeter gap between the surface of the apples, for instance, and your palm of your hands, and you need to shut your mind down and focus on what's happening and on your palms. So if you sit there quietly and just feel the vibrations, just focus on what's happening on the palm of your hands, you will feel the warmth from the red and the cool from the green. And you can do this on so many different things. Next slide, please, Mark. You can do it on like pieces of paper, like in this exercise that we did. Um, you can do it on materials. You can do it on fruits and vegetables. It's very, very interesting to be able to share that with people. And the more you do it, the more you get it faster. And then there's also, next slide, please. Um, there's also the case that you can feel different shades of colors. So this is uh, the workshop that I delivered at the Museum of Contemporary Arts in Sydney. And um, it was just incredible. Um, uh, this lady was able to feel the shades of color as well, um, which is fascinating. And then in one hand, she could feel, if you can see her hand is over the blue in the palm and then fingers on the red, she could feel the cool energies on the bottom of her heart, hand and then the um, warm energies on their fingers. So that's how sensitive we are, that we can, we have the receptors in our hands to feel the energies. We have the receptors in our whole body to feel the energies. So for instance, if you wore an outfit that is fully red, you will be very, very warm in comparison to if you wore an outfit that was white. Um, hence why we culturally normally in the summer would wear white, pale colors, etc. And in the winter and autumn, you know, you see the fashion come out in, bro in, in brown and plum, darker colors. So we do kind of like embrace it anyway without realizing, but you can feel these energies. And it is fascinating when you're sharing this with people. And it, you know, as I said, especially with the blind community, it's been a real blessing to be able to do that. Next slide, please. So I'm going to do um, exercise with yourselves. If you can, hopefully if you've got a big screen in front of you, just focus on the red in this painting called Ruby. So this is a very energizing piece. If you just look at the red, you will, if you focus on it and you just try and, you know, um, stop any other noise in your mind and just, and see that at the end of the day, it's really vibrating. I mean, it's, you've got a lot of energy in the textures, etc. but I'm just really focusing on the red. So if you had a red painting or a red wall or something in front of you and you just focused on it, you will feel energized and you will feel hot as well, depending on the environment and what you're wearing as well. But colors emit vibrations that you can physically feel. So please, if you hopefully remember that, if you wanted to, for instance, wear an outfit and you wanted to show power, wear red, it really knocks people out in the end as well. But it's just, it is powerful and it is something that people don't kind of like use the most um, out of. But red, for instance, if you're looking at this painting, you, if you Im immerse yourself in it, you will feel the vibrations and you will feel kind of like a sense of evoke, uh, energies evoked in you. So yeah, I'm gonna leave you for two, two three seconds and we're gonna talk, just look at the reds in this piece. Okay, right. So then in contrast to this painting, the next painting, thanks Mark, is called Eva. And this is green, different shades of green. And I've created this to evoke a sense of calm. So it's a piece that if you stand, stood in front of it or literally any green environment, you know, green gives you a sense of nurturing calm. It gives you a sense of comfort. It evokes it, it releases stress it releases tension immediately so um i'm gonna be quiet for a few seconds again let you just immerse yourself into the green and then we'll um resume in a few seconds so just feel the waves Pretend even that you're in a, a beautiful field with the sun shining and you've got the green, the shades of green, 
you feel like you're having a big hug from this beautiful color. I hope you can really make the most of greens all around you wherever possible, because it is such a tool that most people, sh I hope people would use to give an instant sense of relief. So I'm gonna leave Eva there, and I'm gonna finish with a quote by Wassily Kandinsky that highlights and that just summarizes how powerful color is. And this is from the 1920s, he knew what he was talking about. He said, color is a vibrational tool and working with its energy and light frequencies provide both information and inspiration. So I'll leave you with that very, very poignant quote and thought with, from Kandinsky. And um, if you have any questions about anything that I spoke about today, feel free to um, DM me on LinkedIn or um, let me know. And I'm happy to help you with um, empowering yourselves with color in all of its glory. Thank you. Thank you so much, Farah. That was fascinating. I'm going to be getting some tiles out and giving that a try. Um, <laughs> I think that's that's good. I've, I know, I mean, we, we all know, don't we, that if your white tends to reflect the energy of the sun, black tends to absorb it, um, and you can tell the difference um, in those circumstances. I imagine that the, the reason Barbie was such an annoying film for me is because it was so heavily pink. Yes. <laughs> I hated it. Sorry, all the billboards and <laughs> annoying for me as well <laughs> <laughs> excellent thank you so much um